Uh, before we get into the message this morning, I want to talk a little bit about the upcoming election. First of all, I want to encourage and challenge us to participate and to vote. It's very easy with the incredible negativity and all of the garbage that has just been spewed out through media, through all the different all the different avenues. It's, it's just the social media, all of it, the politicians, it's ugly. And it would be very easy to say, yeah, I don't want to be a part of any of that. I, I want to I challenge that way of thinking. I want to suggest that the vote is an amazing privilege, it is a gift, and it is a stewardship responsibility. I really believe that. I believe we, we have to be stewards, okay? You, you need to know, we don't put our hope in the political process, right? I don't trust in the political process but I have a vote and I need to be a steward with it. I don't trust in money in my life, but, but God's blessed us with resources. We have to be a steward with it. Okay, we don't put our hope in it, but we steward it. Well, I think the vote is like that. I just want to encourage you. I also want to encourage you <clears throat> that we as qu Christians remember that it is our faith that informs our politics, not the other way around. It is very bothersome to me to see Christians who come in and their first identity, now they might not even say this, but their first identity is their politics. And that's my first loyalty. That's my first identity. I, I want to say to you, we, we are not first Republicans. We're not first Democrats. We're not first Americans, folks. We're first Christians. As followers of Jesus, that's who we are. That's our first and our highest calling. And that's our eternal identity. Okay? And we need to keep that in mind. And don't let some political party tell us how we're supposed to steward this vote of ours. It does matter. It's obviously very important, and there's a lot of different people out there and a lot of different visions for this nation. And I want to suggest that we be people who steward that vote. Our faith should guide us in how we use that and how we choose and how we respond in that arena. Now, I want to give you a few key issues that I look at, and then I want to suggest to just offer, for, submit to you for you to consider. A few key issues that I look at that as, as I have to make the decisions to steward a vote, okay? When we're talking about either a person or a party, I think of three things, and you can remember very simply, law, life, and liberty. Law, life, and liberty, okay? I think of these three things. The first is law. I think of rule of law. Rule of law. How does a person or a party approach the rule of law? Because the rule of law matters. The scripture says all authority is from God, and a, a society is based on a rule of law. And how does a, if, if a particular person or a party consistently undermines the rule of law, I find it very hard to support them. I find it very hard to support them because fundamentally, you can't interact in a society without a sense of law. And, and understand, all authority comes from God. And what that means is, Scripture says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is no perfect authority but his. Everybody is going to be fallen to some degree or another. There is no perfect politician. I can't believe I even had to say that. But <laughs> there, it's out there now. Now you, it's official. There is no perfect politician. Okay? But the fact is, that doesn't mean you completely disregard and throw off authority. Because authority is from God. It, all of it's delegated. God in his infinite power could easily snap his finger and remove whoever he wants. So he allows authority. He even allows imperfect authority at times for his purpose and his reason. We may not understand it, but the scripture talks about it over and over and over again. So rule of law is a big deal. How does a person or a party approach a rule of law? Life is a big deal. I mean, honestly, the, the, the pro-life issue is a big deal to us. You know, the abortion issue is a big deal. I'm, I'm, I am not a one-issue voter, and I don't recommend you be a one-issue voter. But let me tell you something about this, this deal. We believe that all life is created by God. We believe life is sacred and deserves protection. We believe that, and we believe life begins at conception. And really, there's no other authoritative, scientific answer that says it begins at another time. Life begins at conception, and it deserves the protection that life deserves. And so we believe that. But let me tell you something more about this issue. I want to suggest this issue. Where you stand on this issue of abortion says a lot about how you view people, how you view life, humanity, and more importantly, how you view God. How do you view God? Where do we come from? Who are we responsible to? What is your view of life? That view of life matters. And so that's an issue I look at very carefully. And I, I would have a very hard time voting for someone who thinks it's okay to end a human life just because it is in the womb and not in the room. I just, I, I don't, I, I, I watch that carefully. And 
finally, liberty. And this, okay, if I have a, if I have a danger of being a one-issue voter, this is it, religious liberty. Religious liberty, because here's the deal. I don't ultimately believe government is the answer for what ails the United States of America or the world. I don't believe government can fix it. I certainly don't believe the political process can fix it. I don't believe the economy is the answer. I believe Jesus Christ and the gospel is the hope for the world. I believe that. I believe there's, there's, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me, and I believe him. I've come to believe that and built my life on that. Religious liberty is a core issue. And how a person or a party views religious liberty is huge because what I would vote for and what I look to is whoever will allow religion to freely flow. And by the way, I I mean all religions. If I could become president tomorrow, okay, president tomorrow, as long as we're going to be ridiculous, if I could become dictator tomorrow, which would be better, I mean... So let's just go that route. If we're just going to crazy dream, if I could become dictator tomorrow, I would not try to dictate that everybody follow the Christian faith. I, I, don't, I think that defies the idea of faith. Faith has to be voluntary. For it to be real, it has to be voluntary. So I don't think you can legislate faith. I don't think you should. I want to suggest that, that I, I believe in our First Amendment and this idea that Religious freedom and government shouldn't make any laws restricting the free exercise of religious freedom. And I, because I believe the hope is the gospel. And so you're like, yeah, well, what about all the other religions? I want them to be free too. Because I believe Christianity, when it has freedom to be shared, thrives and grows and, and creates a good and a better world for everybody. Now, honestly, I believe Christianity grows when it's oppressed. I believe, I, you know, I don't think you're going to hold the gospel back. Fundamentally, I don't believe any government, any person. It's been tried before, okay, and it's failed every time. But that issue, religious liberty, is one I watch. And really, when you stop and think about it, how does a person or a party treat the separation of church and state? That implied idea in the First Amendment. How do they treat separation of church and state? Do they see it as a protection of the state from faith? Or do they see it as the protection of faith from the encroachment of the state? Those are two very distinct and different approaches. And if they see the separation of church, say that First Amendment protection as trying to protect the state from people of faith, then you'll always have a problem because the state, they want to always expand, and the, what that means is pushing faith to the fringes. And I think that's devastating, and that's de- desperately hurtful for our culture and our country. But if you see it the other way as protecting faith from the encroachment of state, then I think you are protecting the free expression. How does a person or party view that? Those are issues that are very, very important to me. And I I submit that to you as something to prayerfully consider. Bottom line, I believe we should steward our vote, and I believe we should do it as a disciple of Jesus Christ first, not as as a spokesperson for any political party. Can I pray for you? Lord, I pray that you'd speak to us. I pray that we would hear your heart. Jesus, I pray according to the Lord's prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done in America as it is in heaven, Jesus. Help us as your church to be surrendered to your will. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to participate in the process, this upcoming election, this midterm election. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would participate, and I pray that we would vote according to how you direct, according to what your word teaches, and that we would think about these big issues, prayerfully consider them as we cast a vote. Jesus, we love you and we trust you, and our hope is not in government, our hope is not in this political process, our hope is certainly not in this upcoming election. Our hope is in you. Lord, I pray that you'd speak to us as we go through your word. I pray that you would move, open our hearts, give us the ability to hear and the courage to follow in obedience. In Jesus' name, amen.